Hi, I'm Jennifer McGuire, and I'm a guest instructor at twopeasinabucket.com. This is week four of the Thinking Inking Holiday series, and I'm going to focus on using paint for creating these cards that you see here. Uh, you can do any of these techniques with regular acrylic paint, but I'm going to be focusing on uh, using paint dabbers from Ranger. Uh, this is the only kind of acrylic paint I use now. This is a paint dabber. This is a brand new one I have here. I wanted to show you how you use it. It's got this sponge on top and there's actually a valve in there and when you press down on it you can feel the valve release and it allows the right amount of paint to come out. So I'm just doing a little squeeze but you can see how easy it is to get that paint right out. So I'm, I'm just using the same uh, technique, just dabbing along onto this stamp so you can see that's just how you ink up a stamp it's going to be kind of splotchy like that but it doesn't matter when you stamp it it'll look lovely so you don't want to do this with a super detailed stamp but this one's just perfect with it so there you can see what it looks like to stamp with this acrylic paint uh, this first project uses that same stamp but we're going to do a paint resist so I did that on the background here so I'm going to use that same stamp, the Square Brocade from Hero Arts, and I'm going to dab the, per, uh, the pearl-colored paint dabber from Ranger all over the stamp, and then I'm going to stamp it onto white paper. So you can see it's pretty messy there, but it'll still stamp nice. These paint dabbers are great for applying ink to a stamp for stamping because it puts just the right amount of ink out, and you don't have a super mess like you would if you were using a sponge and regular paint. So there you can see uh, the results when stamping with this pearl paint. So I've let this dry. Uh, and you can zap it with a heat gun if you'd like to hurry it along. And I'm going to apply three different colors here of Distress Ink. I have Rusty Hinge, Vintage Photo, and Peeled Paint. And I'm using my ink blending tool, which has foam on it. And I'm just going to work color real heavily over this. And you'll see the, the pearl paint is going to hold some of the color, but we'll wipe that off in a second. You can do this with any color acrylic paint. Uh, I just like this pearl because it gives a lovely shine when we're done. So I'm going to go back with a wipe and you just want to wipe it a little bit. You don't want it to get saturated because it'll just lighten everything. But You can see how that pearl stamped image just pops. It gives a great ghost-like image in the background. You can see here in the light. And then you can see uh, I went back and I stamped with Archival Black Ranger ink which is a permanent ink that stamps nicely over stamped images. Wanted to show you how to do the bottom of this. This is a scallop border die from Tim Holtz and Sizzix. So I want to take the edge of my card. I'm going to do the bottom edge here. This is a little trick. I just take a post-it note and use the post-it note to somewhat hold it in place because I don't want it to shift when I go put the top plate on. So you can see the sticky part of the post-it. I'm just going to hold it there. I'll put the top plate on and I'll run it through. This is the electric big shot. So all I have to do is push a button and it goes right through. I love this machine. And you can see here, you have the perfect scallop edge for your card. I went ahead and stamped stamp the background with a wood grain stamp from Hero Arts and then added some vintage photo distress ink to the edges just to make the card pop. One of my favorite tricks is to use these thin strips of cardstock instead of a big mat behind a project. This to that, and this is my favorite adhesive, adhesive from American Crafts. It's little permanent dots that rub right off and it's great for putting on thin pieces like that. Now I'm going to, I just stamped this tree using this Merry Christmas tree set from Hero Arts. It's my favorite holiday set of theirs. And I just stamped on some basic gray paper with some vintage photo distress ink. This is a great technique to make a, just a plain stamped image pop. I'm using some peeled paint ink and just adding splotches of color in certain areas of the tree and you can see how where it's not inked in the center it looks like it's almost highlighted. So just partially inking the image. These are self-adhesive uh, lace from Hero Arts. And I'm just putting it right across the card. I love how it sticks real well. And then I'm going to put my other thin strip over it. I just like how that gives a nice finished look to the project. And then you can just cut right off the edge and you're good to go. This self-adhesive lace works really well. You don't have to fuss with adhering it. And it comes in cream and white. Now I've put a, a little trunk on my tree and I ran some adhesive down the back of it. I'm going to show you how I wrap twine around these trees or anything for that matter. Got this end sticking out one side of my tree trunk and now I'm going to wrap up the tree and then I'm going to run, run, uh, wrap back down. And you can see the other end of the twine ends up on the other side of the trunk and then we just tie it in a bow right on the front. 
And I'm just going to stick this right down to my craft sheet temporarily so it holds there while I tighten a bow. And since I put adhesive down the whole back of the tree, it keeps the twine from sh shifting as I'm wrapping it up and down. And also now I can stick it on the craft sheet easily just to hold it while I tie this bow. It's just a fun and easy way to add a little bit of texture to the card, but not too much bulk. And there's the finished card. And you can see I added a few pearls to kind of accent that pearl resist background we did. The next project is texture paint stamping. And I did that on these three snowflake blocks on this card. So I'm just gonna ink up my stamp. These are Hero Art stamps. Ink it up as I usually do by dabbing it on, but now I'm gonna swipe across. And that sponge just kind of removes some of the ink and you get these stripes of paint on the stamp. And when you go to stamp this on the paper, it'll transfer that little striped faux texture look right onto your paper. So you can see how that looks. I just think this is gorgeous for these reverse type images like this one. I also like to use my paint dabbers to rub right against the edge of a piece of paper. It adds some nice color just on the side surface. Easier to do that than with a paintbrush. I wanted to use this basic gray paper that has flowers and I think it works just by inking it up a little bit and kind of hiding it. I'm still able to use it on a Christmas card. Then I'm adding some uh, distressing to the edge of the card and there is the finished project. You can see I added some pearls just to make it pop. Next project is faux letter press with paint and you can see I did this on that rectangle in the background there. I'm using Sizzix embossing folders. These are my favorite because they're nice and large and some silver paint. I like to open up the paint sometimes and just use it as regular paint and pour it on my craft sheet. It just wipes right off. This is cut and dry. It's, it's just a foam piece that you cut pieces off. It's from Ranger. And I just like it because it applies paint really nicely. So I'm kind of just covering that whole foam piece with some silver paint. Open up the embossing folder. And on the side with the raised areas, so on the male side, I'm going to just lightly, lightly, lightly rub some paint over just the raised area. You want to try not to get it in the crevices along here. So I'm just lightly rubbing some paint. I need a little bit more here. And then I'll go back and lightly dab along it. So what's going to happen is when I put a piece of paper in here to emboss, the, the paint will actually end up in the crevices of the paper or the, in the um, valleys on the paper. Because I'm being careful just to lightly dab onto the raised areas of the embossing folder. I've always liked letterpress and I thought this was a great way to kind of create it on your own. So I'm going to carefully put a piece of white paper in here. You don't want to let it shift. So you close it up tight, run it through your embossing or through your big shot or your cuddle bug or whatever machine you have, and you'll end up with this letterpress look. I'm going back with these Fantastics just to add some paint in the areas that the paint didn't transfer very well. Now I'm adding a little bit of antique linen and vintage photo. I like to do both because it gives a little bit more dimension. Um, over the entire surface. I wish you could see the raised areas. You can kind of see it there, but it's really lovely in real life. Now for this point set, I'm just dabbing lots of cranberry red paint all over the flower, and then I'm going to actually go back with red pepper, which is a little bit lighter, and dab in the center of the flower before I stamp. Now I will get a little bit of this cranberry onto my red pepper dabber here, but I'll just go back and wipe it off and then it'll be good to go and I don't have to worry there. I'm just taking off that extra paint and you don't have to worry about it transferring again. And you can see how lovely that adds a highlighted look to the center. This is one of my favorite tricks with pearls. I like to do five or six in a circle as I'm doing here. And these are from Here Arts. And then I'm going to go and fill in that hole. You can see the circle that I formed there of pearls. I'm gonna fill in that hole with some glossy accents uh, fill it in pretty good so that when I go back with a large yellow pearl and stick it on top, it will stay there and I'll end up with this dome of uh, pearls. So it looks kind of like a button that's there, but I've created it on my own. And that'll stay put very well because I use glossy accents. So there you can see the flower there. So this next picture should show the letterpress. There you can kind of see the texture you get from that. Thanks for watching another video for twopeasinabucket.com. If you have more questions, just visit our website, and I hope you have fun with paint.